number of factors that I have studied explain why the demand for housing and population growth is being so important in some areas and not in other areas. But all of that demand for housing is actually mediated by the supply for housing. How does the local production of real estate assets and specifically housing react to those demand shocks? You can think of housing and real estate as being com a composite of two main inputs, the construction, the built environment, and that just costs you money to build in terms of construction costs, and also the cost that uh, it's attributable that you're actually going to spend on the land. So both of these matter, I actually studied why construction costs are quite different across different metropolitan areas. So it's, it happens to be quite expensive to build here in Boston per square feet of built, uh, you know, office space or housing unit. And in New York City, in Chicago, but it's quite cheap in relative terms to build in Atlanta and in Phoenix. The other important aspect of the supply for housing and for real estate is actually the availability of land that's ready to be developed. We have plenty of land in many metropolitan areas, but not so much land that's actually attractive for development, land where people want to do business, they want to live on, and not so much land that's available in terms of permits, zoning, so on and so forth, in terms of regulations and how easy is for developers to actually be building on those plots of land. So a couple of things that I've worked on is actually looked at both the man-made aspects of land supply the regulations. We performed a survey of all metro areas of municipalities in all metro areas of the United States and we ascertained how easy in these different towns that we surveyed, how easy it is for a developer to actually put a real estate product, maybe office, a mall, or housing in place. How easy it was for these projects, real estate development projects, to go, to go through the zoning and approval process in the municipalities. And what we found is that these are quite important determinants of which metropolitan areas allow development and which metropolitan areas do not allow development. So that metropolitan uh, areas in which municipalities are very restraining, they constrict, they don't allow new development to happen on the land, you tend to see these demand forces that we were talking about in terms of immigration, in terms of IT, so on and so forth, they tend to be translated into higher prices. Whereas in areas where you can develop easily, most of the action, quote unquote, from these push in the growth for these areas is actually translated into more housing and more real estate construction without prices for real estate assets and housing values going up very much.